Okay, hello everyone. Um, thank you for everyone joining me live. We've kind of been getting to know each other here. And if you're watching the replay, thank you very much for joining me virtually, virtually, virtually. Um, my name is Whitney Freya. I am the author of the book, Rise Above, Free Your Mind, One Brushstroke at a Time. Uh, among other things, I opened an art center in 1996 in Nashville, Tennessee, um, with zero art training, literally. Um, when I opened the doors of my art center on May 1st, um, 1996, I had never painted on a canvas. I had never painted with acrylic paint. I remember wondering what I was going to hang on the walls. And... Um, I had other people teach the classes. Um, I opened the art center because of a profound intuitive call that I received to create like the YMCA for the right brain, to create a safe place where people could come to make art the way I had always wanted to make art um, in order that they became empowered to go out into the art that is their life and create the change they wanted. So I learned how to paint along with my students, as well as learning the truth and the power of the connection between our ability to move through fear and create what we want into the art that is our life and how that can be uh, expanded and strengthened through working out our right brain muscle with the visual arts. Um, when I opened in 96, from 96 until 2004, my art center offered pottery, mosaics, we had paper mache classes, paper making classes, art journaling classes, drawing classes. We had all kinds of classes. Um, this is before the pottery painting places opened, at least in Nashville, you guys. Um, I mean, it was like a cornucopia of art projects. And here's what I observed. That everyone who, um, you know, did the mosaics or did the Sculpey clay or did the, um, the drawing class even, if I brought up the blank canvas, they were still like, oh, I can't paint on a canvas. I can't paint. You know, that was scary to them. But when I observed the people who had painted on the canvas, they weren't afraid to do anything. So when I kind of relocated, rebranded all these things in 2004, I chose to solely focus on inviting people into a personal painting practice because I am passionate about helping you overcome fear. Fear stands at the threshold of any and all change. And here's the secret. We know fear and excitement are the same energy. The fear is there to prepare you. The fear is there to bring you present. The fear is there to be like, hey, you're about to climb off this mountain or leap over this you know, chasm. Do you have everything you need? Is there anywhere you're feeling um, stuck or unsure? Get that information so that you can step over this threshold. And what I discovered over and over and over and over and over again is that when people overcame their fear of expressing themselves authentically at the canvas, they overcame their fear of expressing themselves authentically in their life. Some of them made small changes. Um, they redecorated. They bought a house. They moved. They made bigger changes, they moved cities, they moved states, they changed jobs, they signed up and learned something totally new, they left relationships, they got in relationships. It was incredible and all along we would meet each other's eyes as they walked up the front um, you know, pathway and we'd get this bug-eyed look is what I called it and they'd be like, guess what I did? I've been meaning to do it forever and I finally did it. Because what happened is they got their right hemisphere stimulated enough that the part of them that is present, that knows only love, that is responsible for learning all things new, loves change, loves the unknown, the intuitive side, that side came into balance. What I do as a creatively fit coach and over 260 creatively fit coaches all over the world, what we do is help people come into a state of being that is balanced, that is free, that is inspired. Because through the personal painting practice that we teach that you'll get a taste of today, they bring the two hemispheres of their brain or they bring their mind and their heart. They bring the duality and the imbalance that is the modern world into harmony. And when that happens, anything is possible. 
And the best part is we simply do this by bringing people to the canvas, engaging them with colors and sacred symbols, and guiding them into a relationship with their own artist within that enables them to create a practice where they can access their own inner wisdom, their own inspiration. We create space. It is not necessary to have any art experience. Um, I didn't. What is necessary is to have this desire, this attraction, this resonance, like this is what I've been looking for. The pieces fell into place. This is how I healed myself. This is what I've been looking for that gives people the tools they need to heal. That's all that's necessary is the heart. I teach you everything else. So to begin, I want to um, lead us in a guided meditation. Um, this meditation is simple and precious to me because it weaves us into the most amazing artist that I know, which is Mother Earth. And it brings us present. I am honored that you are here, and I know that um, you've probably been running around multitasking like I have been today. So let's bring ourselves present simply with our breath. So you can close your eyes or not. I'll leave my eyes open. Um, but please feel free to close your eyes and get super comfy. Again, you're not on video, so sprawl out on the floor, whatever you want to do. And let's simply begin to breathe. Nice deep breaths. For this first breath, you can inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. <sighs> nice and loud. Just imagine yourself filling up with presence and exhaling anything that does not need you right now. And in the next inhale, pause at the top of the inhale and just count to three. One, two, three. And then with your exhale, exhale all the way out and then hold that exhale. One, two, three. And with the next inhale, connect to the ribbon of energy that is this breath. Where was this breath before it was right in front of you? It passed through the doorway into your home. What's outside your home, the trees? the snow, the lake, hills, mountains, draws, ravines. This breath has circulated Mother Earth around and around, and it's now entering as your inhale. And then as you exhale, imagine that same ribbon of breath exhaling and eventually finding its way through the vents, out the doorway, back to the trees. And the trees inhale your exhale. Inhale the exhale of Mother Earth. And as you exhale, send it out to Mother Earth as her inhale. We are in an intimate relationship with Mother Earth. Her exhale is our inhale. And our exhale is her inhale. Breathe in, breathe out. Maybe you see a symbol, maybe this ribbon of breath is forming like an infinity sign, this infinite cycle. Inhale and exhale, or maybe it's a spiral, never ending, no beginning, no ending, just circulating, circulating, bringing life and connecting us all energetically physically, biologically. Breathe in, hold the breath, and send gratitude to the trees outside your home for providing you with this breath. And on the exhale, send out your blessings to Mother Earth. Inhale and exhale. Sense that feeling of balance, of connection, of oneness. 
This is the present moment. Your right hemisphere would be lighting up on an MRI right now. This is the part of us that's meant to guide, to inform us about what's coming, to let us know where we are being called, where we will find our greatest fulfillment, where we will be able to live on purpose. And then we receive this guidance, this information, this insight, this inspiration, this feeling of excitement, of joy, of, of anticipation. And then we turn to our left hemisphere and we let it know what we need it to make happen on the ground, in the physical world. I need more time. I need more money. I need more space. I need more connections. I need more friends. I need more support. The left brain is there to serve the right. The heart is meant to inform the mind. And we've had it a little backwards. So welcome to your journey of becoming creatively fit, of understanding the true nature of your creative spirit, how to access it, how to strengthen it, how to tune into it, and then how to move more authentically, more powerfully in the art that is your life, creating a life your way. This is not what we're taught around the dinner table. It's not what we were taught in school. We were taught that bottom lines and results and production and achievement and the exterior aspects of life were what would give us reward and success. And what you and I know, like we know, like we know, like we know, is that true success and mastery, fulfillment and happiness comes from within. And right now, in this overscheduled world, what people need more than anything is a way to go within. This is why I do what I do, and this is why I circle up with other healers who are interested in unleashing the true nature of our creative spirit so that we can create the change we want to see in our world. So breathe in, so glad you're here right now. Breathe in gratitude and exhale blessings. Send love and light to the space all around you. And whenever you're ready, open your eyes. As a creatively fit coach, my number one passion is watching my clients and the coaches that I circle up with in this training program get lit up from the inside out. And ironically, what does that are these moments where we cross over thresholds, where we learn new things about ourselves, where we gain new self-awareness, where we gain clarity and insight and understanding into who we are at our core and what we really, really, really want more than anything and how we can create that into reality. And the canvas is the first step. This is where we go to realign, to bring ourselves centered, to raise our vibration to that creative frequency, to observe, like looking in a mirror, how we create, where we get stuck, where am I getting stuck? Go to the canvas, you paint. If it's your inner perfectionist, your inner perfectionist comes out at the canvas. If you have an aversion to details, you will broad brushstroke your way through a canvas and understand that. If you finish things or start things and don't finish things, that is what you will see at the canvas. And then at the canvas, you create the change that you want to see in your world. You practice being imperfect. You practice making mistakes. You practice being intuitive. You practice being courageous. And in the process, you stimulate that hemisphere. You send energy to those synapses. You create new neural pathways. This is exactly how our minds work. The canvas creates space and time for you to go within 
get to know yourself. Have the confidence to declare what it is you want. You create it into your physical reality first symbolically, and then that ripples out and you find yourself attracting new opportunities, new insights, new connections. If you want to grow your existing coaching business or healing business, or you want to leave one aspect, you know, and develop an, a new um, string of income, whatever it is you want, you declare it on the canvas. This is part of the training program. And then with all of that creative energy activated with an understanding that the newness and the fear is there to support you and to guide you, you put it into practical use. This is the journey. It's so exciting. So what we're going to do right now is experience um, kind of the tip of the iceberg, but you get the full process of this painting practice right now. And I want this to really serve you right now. I'm not interested in just giving you an anonymous example. So what I want everyone, everyone on this call, please um, type in the chat. And, and this isn't in the replays or anything. So just it's totally anonymous. This is more for you. Okay. Um, so I want you to type into the chat. What do you want new for yourself in 2019? It can be a feeling, more peace, more abundance, more confidence, more freedom. It can be very practical. I want a new job. I want to start my business. I want to write my book. I want to travel to these places. I want to connect with these people. I want to get my wild woman self on. I want to get my medicine woman self on. I, I want to learn. I want to grow. What is it that you really want to experience this year? And put it in the chat. And then I'm going to help you um, write. We're going to write like intentions with the paint onto the canvas to begin. Okay. So just type in the chat, what do you really, really want in 2019? This is good stuff. You guys take advantage of it. What do you want? Do you want to feel healthier, stronger, more physically fit? Are you healing from a dis-ease? Do you want more money? That's great. Want it. Do you want love in your life? Do you want a new relationship, a romantic relationship? What is it you want? You guys don't want anything? <laughs> Amy, what do you want? Dagmar, what do you want this year? Hmm. This painting, for me, this is my 2019 painting. Uh, I moved into my own house this year. And it was the end of a huge chapter. And getting into this house was what I'd been wanting. So I was like, okay, what is the new thing I've been wanting? And this is all about me attracting um, people um, because they understand that I can help teach them new skills, new ways of living in the new world we're stepping into, um, kind of the new paradigm living. Uh, okay, thank you, Andrea. Fabulous. Um, financial abundance and freedom. Write my book, Loving Friendships. Oh, good. That's Andrea and Annalie. Okay. Financial abundance and freedom. Andrea, write my book, Loving Friendships. Perfect. Annalie, thank you. Anyone else? I'm going to help you out here. So, Annalie, um, write my book. Oh, fabulous. Okay. So, what you're going to paint onto the canvas. I'm writing a book, too. I'm writing another book. So, my book is flowing out of me, okay? It's flowing onto the paper, out of me, okay? Financial abundance, freedom. I am earning more money than I ever expected. I am discovering new ways to earn extra income. Extra income is mine, okay? Um, Loving friendships. I love all my friends. So we're writing this present moment. This is already happening. You're already there. It's not I want, I wish, I hope, I will, I am, I do, I have. It is fabulous. Feel what it's going to feel like. Um, Heather, I want to live in my life force, my spirit, woman spirit to inform my body, my relationships, and my work. Money, live in my pelvis, 
and my book, my pelvis big is big. Okay. Fabulous. I, okay, here's an interesting thing, Heather. I've got to share this. The first time I moved or came to where I live now in Oregon, um, I was married. I bought a ranch. Um, well, we bought a ranch. And the first visit, I fell off my horse and fractured my pelvis and sacrum in six places. Okay. The finances, the control. I mean, I lived in the house nine months that we built on that ranch. Um, so the universe was letting me know. So I'm very familiar with the pelvic region. It's very, very autobiographic. <laughs> Right. So I am living my force. I am in my divine feminine. I radiate divine feminine power. You can paint that onto your canvas. Um, Samantha's down with abundance. She wants some abundance. I experience abundance in all areas of my life. I am surrounded by abundant friends, abundant energy, abundant finances, abundant blades of grass, abundance leaves on the trees um, to free myself from sadness. I am happy. I am happier because I know what it's like to feel sadness. I am wiser and happier because of the experiences I've had in my life. Right, Dagmar? Amy, I want to learn to love myself more, know my self-worth, make more positive connections, and start my healing journey through art. Beautiful. I love myself. I love myself like I never thought possible. I am loving how I live my life. I love how I am there for my friends. I love how I am more courageous now. I love how I am pursuing more of what I like. I love myself for turning off Netflix and learning how to paint, right? I love myself for my personal painting practice. Um, oh, Heather, okay. I know, I know your journey. <laughs> Okay, blessings, sister. Okay, so do you understand? If you have any questions, so paint this onto the canvas. You are there. You are already there. There's an aspect of you because you have these desires in your heart. You are meant to experience them. You wouldn't have these desires if they weren't meant to be experienced by you. The question is, are you going to choose them? And then are you going to continue to take steps that are in alignment with this future reality? I love myself. And then you go to do something that isn't loving to yourself. Is this loving me? Is this in alignment with the part of me that is in love with myself? No, then you put it aside, right? So this is the journey. This is why we paint it into the canvas and then we hang it on the wall in our home so that it's beating out that energy. I am healed. I am strong. I am self-loving. I experience a life that is abundant. I only know abundance in my life. I am free. I am free to express myself. I am in my power each and every day. I am wiser and happier because of my life experiences. I have found happiness. I am bathed in happiness every day. So many things make me happy. The sunlight makes me happy. My friendships make me happy. My paintings make me happy. My home makes me happy. Just paint all of it. Happiness. Love. Um, vulnerable. Open, juicy love. Wow, that's mine. Love, juicy love of myself and a lover. How about that? can have it all. Okay. So you're painting this onto the canvas. So this canvas started blank when I started doing these um, webinars a couple days ago. It was blank and I painted and then we painted the owl, if you guys saw that. And then I painted um, in the brown, I painted the words in the last webinar and we painted the triple spiral. And now this webinar, I'm painting with the white. This canvas, this meditation canvas, can be the canvas you paint on all the time. These paintings don't have to have an end. The left hemisphere wants to achieve and produce and have the final result. The right hemisphere understands that life is a process. It is completely present. What do I want right now? I want to align with my creative self. I want to raise my vibration. I go to my meditation canvas to paint, to connect to my higher self, to reconnect to the aspect of me that knows I have everything I need and I can create it, that life is an inside-out job and I am sovereign and free 
inside of me. I can choose what I choose to feel and how I choose to think and the words that I choose to put in my mind. And I've forgotten that this week. So I'm going to the canvas to say, I am peace. I am supportive of myself. I am my own inner cheerleader. Some of your inner critics, right? Our inner critics are strong. We tend to focus on what we don't want. What if everyone on this planet learned to focus their attention and intention on what they wanted? Geez, I haven't felt healthy lately. I haven't felt strong lately. Okay, what does that mean? What do I want? I want to feel stronger. What are all the ways I can feel stronger? I can eat more greens. I can go to the gym and work out. I can walk. What are all the ways? I'm going to imagine myself walking and going to the gym. I'm going to imagine myself meeting friendships and connecting at the gym or out in the parks. I'm going to imagine my life energized and strong instead of imagining and fearing the other side, right? Okay, so now, once you do this, I want you to take a couple other colors that you love, just two. So I've got out this yellow. I'm gonna put a little of this kind of lemon yellow. And I think I'm gonna pick this kind of bright aqua green, is what they call it. I kind of think it's blue, but you know. Okay, so now what you do, <clears throat> um, you can clean your brush or not, right? And just, Dip the brush in the paint, and we're just going to cover. So like if you have a white canvas, the idea with this is that you are covering all the white. You can paint right over your words. If more words come to mind, paint those in. Love. Just cover the canvas, cover the background with the word love. Just do that over and over again. You can go back and forth between the colors. Here's what you're doing right now in this personal painting practice you've just spent say if you were doing this at home or um, a creatively fit coach is coaching you or you are the coach in our training we do over 16 paintings you have just spent 5 10 15 minutes um, declaring what you want you've painted that on the canvas now just in the process of covering this with color you are aligning with your creator self the aspect of you the right hemisphere that loves change that is intuitive that knows only love and you're um if you're becoming like a satellite dish for that intuitive love-based present moment wisdom that has no baggage no history no fear of the future completely present your vibration raises as your vibration raises your energy change changes energy is such that like attracts like so when you raise your vibration all you have to do is raise your vibration and the stress and worry cannot entrain it's not resonant. You know what is resonant? Thoughts that are loving and supportive and expansive that come from your higher self that are connected to your life's purpose and what turns you on and lights you up from the inside out. That's what has to happen. This is neuroscience. You guys can look this up. So as you're continuing to cover the canvas with color, you are bathing in the energy of the words that you painted into there. You are raising your vibration, aligning yourself with your creator spirit, and therefore attracting insight and wisdom. I had on the coaching call today, the group coaching call, we do about two coaching calls um, a month, at least two, like sometimes more. And um, someone was asking a question about teaching the workshop. In the course, and I'll explain this later, in the training, you will teach a workshop during the training, and you'll earn money from it. Um, and I'll show you how you can make your money back for the coaching really easily. And, um, and I told her, I said, well, the first thing you do is you go to the canvas and you paint and you ask yourself for the insight. What is it that you're meant to do at this workshop? Um, let me show you. I'm going to share my screen and show you some other first layers, okay, to give you an idea of what you can look forward to in the coaching training. So... These are examples of paintings from two creatively fit coaches. On the left, the kind of pink and the uh, aqua green colors with yes written all over it. That is Colleen Talbot. She's in Australia. And um, you can see the layers and layers and layers like we're doing. Like my canvas has so many layers now, right? 
um, you look at the black yes in the middle and you see how it's painted on the white and then under that is a line of that blue and then the black and then maybe more white. So you can see all the layers. A lot of times when I'm coaching people, um, they say the hardest part about painting, the hardest part about writing the book, starting the business is getting started, right? This is the easiest part to get started in any creative projects. You just do it. If you want to write a book, start writing. If you want to paint, start painting. If you want to get healthier, do something healthy. You take action in the moment. So this is the funnest part. It's easy to start. Um, and then on the right, you see this is Nadia Munarello Curiata, who's in Canada and in Dawson Creek. And you can see all the drips and the stencils. This is where we play, play, play. We write our intentions. This is during the Yes Extravaganza that the coaches and I did as an art reach um, in the fall, encouraging people to paint the word yes so you could feel how viscerally you, um, you receive what you are painting on the canvas. So these are examples of first layers like we're doing right now. And then once you have this first layer, there are kind of two different ways um, that we proceed in this process. The first way um, is intuitively, uh, where you're just paint, paint, paint until all of a sudden you see something, right? So you might look at um, the canvas on the left and you might see, like, I kind of see the white. See how the white in the center, and then it kind of splits, almost like a fork in the road. I see kind of like a woman leaping um, with her arms back, uh, leaping across the canvas. Maybe you see something else. Maybe it's like a, a bird or a butterfly. Um, so intuitively, you paint and paint and drip and stencil until you see something. It's like, oh, my gosh, look at that. And you paint that. That is an image or a symbol that you're being given. You're having a conversation with your infinite creative self and your infinite creative self is saying, I want you to see a woman leaping, Whitney, because you're getting ready to make a leap and I'm preparing you. Okay, so that's one way to do it. The other way, if you look at Nadia's on the right, um, she put all of this fun and juju, there's all kinds of words and things underneath there. And then she painted the word yes, her symbol, her image. So likewise, you can go to the canvas with a particular symbol or image because you want more of that energy. I want more yes energy. So let me give you another example. On this next page, I have two of my paintings um, that illustrate both examples as well. So on the left, the, um, the goddess flying through the air with the owl on her shoulder, kind of like, oh my gosh, look, the owl on my shoulder, holy smokes. Okay, um, so this one I started intuitively. I was painting it horizontal, painting, painting, dripping, stripes, just, detaching, surrendering, letting go of the fear of not painting, you know, not knowing what to paint and just waiting to see what I saw. And I turned the canvas and I can still remember turning it and being like, oh, hello, it was so obvious. The woman was right there, the goddess was right there. I think it's Athena, frankly. And, um, and so I was being offered a message from this painting. And this painting still hangs in my bedroom. It, in, it teaches me and teaches me. Sometimes I notice the buildings, the houses in the bottom right corner, see the little yellow houses on the hill. Um, and then she is so big up top. And that was the first message I got was that I had a choice that I could choose to live my life from the perspective of those little houses, the 3D reality, thinking that all of this physical external stuff is what's important, or I could rise above Okay, this is before riding Rise Above. This is before learning how to fly. You know, I paraglide um, and before either of those things. Um, so they can be somewhat prophetic as well. Um, and then also I get all kinds of um, guidance around, you know, the owl is a symbol of spirit and following. Doesn't it kind of look like the owl is guiding her? And then she's radiating um, her energy from that place. Um, so that's an example of an intuitive painting. And then on the right is one of my many, 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 many Buddha paintings. I paint Buddha whew, because the first time I painted Buddha it was right after my divorce and moved into the rental, left the 700 acre ranch and the 4,500 square foot home that I had um, just designed and helped to build and uh, moved in um, to my own house for the first time. And I was in this huge back and forth, right? Like, I'm free and oh my God, what the hell have I done? And I get to live my life all over and have I screwed up my children? You know, it was one of those. And I went to paint Buddha 
And that was really the first time that I realized like, oh my gosh, I feel so different depending on what I'm painting. And Buddha made me feel so peaceful and calm and wise. I painted a shit ton of Buddhas, you guys. I painted so many Buddhas and I had a Buddha art show. I created a Buddha art program, which you can still tap into at paintbuddha.com. Um, it was amazing. So I painted Buddha to create, to bathe myself in that energy. So you see the difference when you're kind of receiving the message and the other, you're letting yourself know, hey, I want to feel more peace. I declare that I am going to feel more peace. Or you paint the owl because you want to see things that, um, that you wouldn't otherwise see in the dark. Um, the last webinar, we painted a triple spiral, which is a symbol of feminine intuition. I want to develop my intuition. So I paint the triple spiral to bring that energy, that intuitive feminine power into my life and into my being, right? So, so much fun. In um, the Creatively Fit training, we do Vision Quest, which works through the four elements. Um, like I mentioned, you'll paint uh, 15, at least 15 paintings in Vision Quest. Um, very powerful. We work with sacred symbols. You paint 12 paintings, kind of like the Buddha. Um, and this one where you're either seeing something over and over in your life and you're like, wow, clearly, I'm meant to paint this, or um, you are like, okay, I really want this energy. I want this strengthening energy, this clarity. So I'm going to paint an arrow. You do that 12 times over and over the same canvas or not, but you, we learn detachment. Um, and then in super soul flow is um, where we charge. We open up to a meditation practice that blends uh, traditional meditation, guided meditation, sound bath with painting meditation. And this is where we get our wings. Um, so throughout the training program, you learn several different ways through the elements, through meditation, um, through different uh, kind of structures that you can turn around and share with your, uh, your audience, your clients. Awesome. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so now you're, um, this is perhaps a little drier or if you've been painting while I've been talking, that's great. And now what I'm going to offer you is one of my favorite symbols that we're going to paint onto this canvas. Um, this symbol is one that I am offering to you because it will help you to cultivate a lightness of being around these desires everything you just painted into your canvas instead of feeling that like pressure and heaviness i have to do this and why haven't i done this and oh, i've got to work on my book and you know i've got to heal and why aren't i happy and why am i still dwelling on this heavy 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 what we want to cultivate is a lightness of being this amazing receptivity and going with the flow and and an airiness. It's also suggestive of the air element, which is the mental realm. It's offering you a way to remember to focus your words and your thoughts and your ideas towards what you desire. And what is this most magical symbol? It is the feather. One of my favorites. I have worked with the feather over and over and over, and I love it. So we're all going to paint a feather on our canvas right now. Um, when you start finding feathers around, like I bet you're going to, even in the winter, even up in Toronto or Pennsylvania, um, you will be getting the sign, remember, lightness of being. This feather um, and working with the symbols, you can use them like a yantra, which is a visual mantra. So you bring it to mind when you're feeling heavy or worried or stressed. And you just feather, you imagine a feather, you picture a feather, you go to your feather canvas and paint on your feather to declare and create into your reality this lightness of being, okay? So I will demonstrate how I paint a feather. Of course, there are bajillions of ways. It's so fun to Google image, I wear Google image app um, to Google image feather. So I paint the stem or the shaft first. Okay, so I 
paint it kind of curvy from one corner to the next. I'm using a red oxide now. And then the top of the feather is um, a little angled and kind of square. And then as you go along the same direction as the, the center, you just get narrower, closer to the center and do these little dips. These little kind of, you know how feathers get, actually I have a ton of feathers right over here, but okay. So just kind of dink, even just like little lines like this and then come back up and kind of square. I think that way it looks a little bit more like a feather than um, a leaf. Again, no end to the ways you can paint the feather. You see it? I wish I could see all you guys and see your feathers. Oh. You can post it um, um, on my Facebook page in the comments or make your own post and that would be super fun. Or you can email me, WhitneyFreya at gmail.com and send me pictures of your feather. You saw someone sent the triple spiral in the emails maybe you got. I love that, I'm so kind. Okay, so then you've already got the other colors on your canvas from the background, I mean on your palette. So I'm cleaning my brush, I guess I didn't really have to. And I'm just gonna add in kind of a, following this kind of diagonal, I'm not covering up all the background and I might paint over this line a little bit more and you just start filling in color yeah, this way and you can do lines I mean you guys have seen feathers everywhere right like there's no end and just start maybe some white the other thing I'd like to do sometimes um, when we first outline a, a symbol it feels um, intimidating like but yeah I don't know how to paint a feather like you guys are probably rocking it I'm probably gonna like your feathers better it's all good okay the other thing you can do I have to go for another color now I can't resist reach down into my oh, okay this is magenta it's a metallic magenta how much do we love magenta okay I'm gonna put that in there so the other thing you can do um, before tackling the inside of the symbol, uh, I shouldn't say tackle, um, is go around the outline in the background. And I'm leaving a little bit actually of this kind of predominant blue background, kind of creating a second outline here. So I do that and then I blend this out. Now again, some of you may have um, lots of painting experience. You don't, um, you're not a beginner painter. What I teach you is how to teach others, how to make it simple. A lot of the creatively fit coaches have never painted before. They have no art background. Others do, but they don't know how to share how they do it because they do it kind of intuitively or you know they went to art school for years and years and you know they they don't understand that was one of the reasons I started teaching at my art center was not because I thought I was going to teach it's because um, I was better at teaching beginners right so um, so that's what I did okay so now you guys are happily painting your feathers, right? Is everyone happy? Enter in the chat how this is going for you if you have any questions or any ahas that you're having. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna make your left brains happy. So the left brain um, is a really good thing. The left brain is the part of you, like your inner admin, right? Um, and it's the part of you that sees itself as separate and, um, and you in um, need of protection, right? And so this is what keeps us fed and clothed <laughs> and on the right side of the street and things like that. So the left brain is not a bad person, I mean a bad thing. Um, what it is, is overworked because we have been taught that before we do anything new, we have to make sure it's safe. 
And inherently, if you've never experienced something before, how can you possibly reassure yourself that you're going to be perfect at it, that you're never going to make a mistake at it, that it's going to stay right on schedule? You see what I mean? So the left hemisphere is a little stressed out and overworked, frankly. Okay, now I'm just like excited to finish outlining this feather. Um, because we're going to it to ask it, can I do this new thing? Can I change my career? Can I um, be healthier and stronger? Can I write my book? And all the left brain knows what to say is, well, uh, have we done this before? Are we an expert at it? Is there proof? Is there a guarantee? If no, then all I can say is no. It is physiologically programmed to resist all change. And we're going there saying, hey, can I do this new thing? And the left brain's like, sister, you ask me this stuff over and over, and all I can tell you is no. Your right hemisphere is the one that's letting you know that energy you're getting, that joy that you're feeling, that's your yes or no. All I know how to say is that it's unknown, there's no guarantees, there's risk, you're not good at it. You're not an expert. You may make a mistake. Someone may roll their eyes at you, and therefore, you should absolutely not do it. On another note, this is why people, and I've been there, stay in abusive relationships, emotionally abusive, physically abusive, because even the known could be better than the unknown. That's how strong that left hemisphere resists change. So I ain't lying, okay? When you develop a personal painting practice, as a creatively fit coach, what you're learning is how to help people bring themselves into balance, align with that creator self, raise their vibration, and all of a sudden, whatever you've been putting up with or whatever isn't serving you, it's like, oh, that's not in my frequency. This is not who I am. What do I want? And what are the steps I can take now to get closer? It doesn't mean you have to quit or you know, throw everything out the window. It just means you open up to change and you begin to follow the clues. Because you're going into the unknown, right? You don't figure it out. You will be guided. It's magical. Okay, let me make your right brain, um, left brains happy. I'm going to share my screen again. And I'm going to share with you a slide that shows you... Oh, I keep doing this. Oh, good. There it is. Phew. Okay. Um, oh, here's some other paintings. These are in my book, Rise Above. The whale is um, an animal totem for peace. Because the emotional waters, right? Um, whales, huge eight-story whale, emotional waters, that whale isn't flustered at all. So we paint a whale to master the emotional realm um, and to help us through emotional challenges. Um, the feather, here's one of my feather paintings. Look how straight those are. Those must have been feathers um, on a mission. Okay. Um, here, this is an example of two different workshops. What I'm going to show you is how you can earn the money back quickly um, that you invest in the coaching training um, through teaching workshops or online programs. So um, I included these pictures on the left. This is me in Seattle last September, um, or two Septembers ago maybe even, geez. And um, I just wanted to show you, you don't even need tables and chairs. <laughs> Bring your yoga mat, everyone. We all brought drop claws. We had a blast. We painted big um, angel wing canvases. And then on the right, this is um, an art studio in Southern California in Old Town Orange um, that I've taught at a couple times because there's a creatively fit coach down there. And um, the studios are lovely. I almost always um, pay them a percentage of the people that sign up. And um, they're very generous and um, we have a blast. So. Um, I want to show you these numbers to help you understand how you can uh, make your money back um, within the first couple months uh, that you start teaching or sharing. So on the left, um, you see I have the example where you're teaching monthly Rise Above workshops. Now you will teach a Rise Above workshop in the Creatively Fit Coaching Training. Um, and so you're earning the money right there. Uh, and then what I recommend for most people is to teach a monthly in-person workshop. That's where you meet people. People get to know you. They get to know the practice. They overcome their fears. It's not a huge price investment. And so um, I normally charge for a one-day workshop around $133. Um, dollars and the studio normally gets about $33. And I get um, the $100 a person with an average class of eight. Like the one I just taught in Denver had 14. So let's just say eight. So you're making $800 per person. 
Um, statistics show, and I actually am not sure I did my math here right with the two, but anyway, statistics show that 20% of people that listen to you, that hear your information, are going to want more. Um, so actually, I don't think 20, 25% is two. So somewhere between one and two people <laughs> with eight people will want more. Um, in the coaching certification, you're also able to develop with us, you know, we help you if you want to develop your next kind of coaching offer or your next deeper dive workshop. When I was in Nashville before the coaching or anything, I taught uh, a monthly painting made easy workshop and then I offered a, a weekend two-day workshop that was twice the amount of money. And so once people took Painting Made Easy, which is all I really marketed, then I let all those people know about the Painting for Fun weekend workshops, and then they would sign up from there. Um, so we keep it simple, simple, simple. Um, so, so around, uh, let's just say $1,300 to $1,800 you're making per workshop. Two of those you've paid for the coaching training. Okay, um, on the right hand column, um, I'll just explain this kind of quickly so I don't confuse anyone, but as you probably know, I have several online programs, including Vision Quest and Super Soul Flow are the two like signature programs, the grounding and the charging. Um, these are anything, everything people need to really step into this new creative paradigm. Um, my Creatively Fit Coaches, um, have access to these online programs to use in their own coaching packages. So you could market um, a Vision Quest eight week in person workshop, a Vision Quest four week, eight week personal coaching. You include the online program on my online classroom site, my content um, that is $399 normally. Um, you just include that. So say you are offering a Vision Quest coaching experience for $5.99, um, you just pay me half of that $3.99 and then you don't have to create an online program. You use mine, you have a private Facebook group, you're coaching people through that. So you can start teaching online right away using my programs, just like a book club. All the people that did The Artist's Way, I know people that made a living teaching Artist's Way workshops by Julia Cameron. They used her book, right? And they charged, it was about $380 um, for a session, for a series, and they made that money. They probably paid her, you know, whatever, 100 bucks or something. So, um, so you don't have to have everything. So if you want to get started, you need to make the money back right away. You can do that. With this example, eight people at $599, you're paying me $199.50. So you're making um, almost $2,400 um, in one session. So two of those you've paid for the coaching training and you've paid yourself. So that is how um, you can um, very clearly make the money back from the program. And here's the thing. I am um, heavy on the implementer. I want you to make money and feel like you're paying off this training right away because what I know then is that that means you're turning around and sharing. And bottom line is right now in this world, in this modern world, can we keep going the way we've been going? Can we look back in the way we've been treating the environment, educating our children, ruling our country, managing our finances, and say, oh, we'll just do it the way we did it last year. No, nowhere can we do that. We need everybody creatively fit so badly, it's incredible. And my vision, like as these rules change, and it's going to drum up anxiety and worry and stress, and we can make ourselves sick and we can let it kill us, or we can rise above and we can thrive. We can lead the way into this new paradigm. This is what this painting is all about for me. This is why I'm here. This is what I get passionate about. I want you to feel like the artist of your life, not like the outside influences are dictating how you live and what is available to you. At the canvas, even this canvas, even this feather, there are still infinite possibilities available to me. And if I'm feeling stuck or I'm feeling overwhelmed or frustrated or like life sucks and I can't do it, I go to my canvas. This is why my house is surrounded by canvases. This is why I did an art auction uh, in October, November, and sold 33 paintings. 
<laughs> because I go to the canvas when I am feeling scared or anxious or worried and I go to the canvas and I connect to what I want and then I paint it into my reality and then that art just pulsates that energy into my space and I do things differently to the point where I am living in my house that I own, flying my paraglider off mountains, traveling around the world, filming online programs because I say so. And I want to get you there quicker, sooner, faster. It's taken me 23 years. Let's not take 23 years, shall we? Okay. So the Creatively Fit Coaching Training starts February 4th, um, Monday. And our first call is February 6th. So you can enroll until Tuesday, February 5th. If you are feeling called to this, we, you email me, um, we will make it happen, okay? Um, so you want to go to, I'm gonna type this in the chat, and you can reply to me. Um, you go to WhitneyFreyaStudio.com. Okay, you can click on that. Um, you go to WhitneyFreyaStudio.com, you click on the Creatively Fit Coaching Certification, you can read more, you can see videos of people that have taken the coaching training, um, and you save your spot. There are about seven spaces left, and they will fill. So you want to make sure you have one of those spots. This will be your journey of personal transformation. This will be your journey to personal freedom. Because you will learn and remember that you are a sovereign, creative, infinite being. And I am here to activate that wisdom that you have buried deep inside, just like I did, and then guide you into like, this is how we look at life now. And this is how you create your reality from now on from a place of infinite possibility. So here's how you know if you're meant to join the next coaching certification. You feel it. Your heart is racing. The hairs on the back of your neck are standing up or have at some point watching this replay or in this live video. You feel a draw to it. That energy, that feeling and emotion is the sign from your right hemisphere, your intuitive self that doesn't speak logically, doesn't communicate in words, written in spoken language. It's feeling. And that is how you know to join. You leap and the net will appear. Thank you for watching the replay. I am going to um, turn off the recording and answer any questions that anyone who's joined me live has. You can email me WhitneyFreya at gmail.com. You can reply to any of the emails that you receive from me. Just hit reply if you have any questions um, or you just want to celebrate with me. High five, Whitney. I'm doing it. I'm signing up. I am up for my own creative liberation and I am going to turn around and liberate others. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>